morning, everyone. A third time's a charm. It's wonderful to be here with all of you today, um, and especially after such engaging professionals that have come before me. So Richard, Rebecca, thank you so much for inviting Teach for the Philippines to share your stage. My presentation today, I promise, is going to be very short. And it follows, I'm I, I, a teacher in education is my background. So I'm going to show you our objectives for today. It's on the screen. And I think I start with the very first and most imp important question of them all. Who am I? My name is Clarissa Delgado, and I'm a proud daughter of the Philippines. So much of who I am and who I aspire to be has been rooted in the culture, the family, and the community that have surrounded me since birth. When I was very young, I moved to the United States. And I was fortunate and I'm very grateful to have developed lasting relationships with communities in Washington, D.C. and Virginia. However, at the beginning of my career, I realized that I wasn't ready yet to give up on my country. And so I came back. My first experience with the public school education system in the Philippines was under the tutelage of two organizations whose logos you see on the screen. The Saklat Sisikat Foundation that worked in functional literacy and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology's Poverty Action Lab, which is the gold standard in impact measurement in the world. My years in Tarlac working for these two entities cemented my passion and and cemented my passion in research, teacher training, and leadership. It was particularly transformative in doing this. I also came to believe in social justice that was grounded in community relationships, and of course, had experience in data. I am currently taking my master's in educational administration at Ateneo de Manila University, and I am the president and the co-founder of Teach for the Philippines. There have been two themes that have been consistent in my life since birth, education and this nation. Education has been a defining part of who I am. I have seen and I have witnessed myself how a quality and excellent education can transform a life. I was incredibly fortunate to be raised by educated parents who encouraged my studies and my own heritage and who encouraged me to pursue my educational dreams. This said, the privilege of those educational opportunities that were afforded to me has left me struggling to understand social justice in our context. Why is it that when I ask about quality education and quality basic services, the answer is, that's just the way it is, or it's good enough, and that these are reserved for a privileged few? Why can't quality basic services be accessed by every Filipino? My belief in the power of teacher leadership training has developed over time, but my commitment to help build this nation is personal. Teach for the Philippines is a local nonprofit social enterprise that recruits, selects, and trains some of these countries' most promising young leaders to teach for two years in public, school te in public schools around the country as teacher fellows. After their two years, our teacher fellows are themselves transformed and continue to commit a lifelong advocacy for education reform. Every day, we touch around 10,000 students. We are also, this year, expanding our nationwide reach. You may find us in 23 schools across eight cities, two of which are in Mindanao. Over 65% of my program's alumni continue their work in education reform by either working in the sphere of education or in the government. This leaves me enthusiastic and confident that the work that we do is going to result in transforming the system that we currently know and in rebuilding this nation what it can be. What are some professional highlights? I would say top of mind is recruiting our first cohort in 2012. And then two years later, in 2015, seeing them graduate. Within two months, 95% of them had jobs. Another professional highlight has been recognition by bodies like Rappler, Deloitte, and championship by respected institutions like the Asian Development Bank, as well as, of course, being on the stage today and asked to share it with people like Bryce and Sarge. Another highlight has been my work with the government. 
Every time I sign a memorandum of agreement with a progressive city led by a young progressive mayor, I consider this an achievement. I am proud to share that there are many of these cities in our country today. We are also growing by 35% next year. We're going to be leading an organization of close to 150 people. And this represents an increased interest in our work by candidates, by cities, and by school districts. Last week, the Loyola Marymount University conferred a doctorate on Pinoy in LA. And this was largely prompted by their work with us. Loyola Marymount professors come to Manila every year and train our teacher fellows, and they see firsthand the development and education that we are undertaking in this country. The story of Teach for the Philippines is not, and has never been, a story about me. It is best described as a story about us. I started Teach for the Philippines based on invaluable support by people who believed in social justice and people who believed deeply in our model of attracting our country's best talent to help solve its most pressing problems. The story starts first with the people that had the idea joined by my co-founders Lizzie and Margarita, who have had over 12 years of experience working in the education space in this country. We were supported by allies, partners, and advisors well before we launched in August 2012. The story continues by the team that has made this a reality. The startup team, led by Patricia Feria on the left and Monette Santos on the right, have worked tirelessly day in and day out since the day that we opened our doors. We are a diverse group of people, but we are united by the common vision that we have for our country. The story continues with our first cohort of fellows, our 2013 cohort. They took a leap in joining a previously unheard of organization. And they are and continue to be my favorite millennials. And as all, of, as all millennials, my favorite millennial question is why? They always ask why. And our teacher fellows, the magical thing with them is that they don't just ask why to themselves and to each other, but they actually do something about it. They continue to work and become better educated citizens. They continue to work in the government and they continue to inspire me with their commitment and work ethic for this country as every succeeding cohort also continues to inspire me. Last but not least, I must make mention of our earliest champions, the Department of Education. They have never wavered in their belief in teacher leadership, and they have never changed their attitude of a welcoming approach towards public and private partnerships. They have patiently taught me and the team time and time again that education is everybody's responsibility. Working in social development is not noble. Nobility in the sense that people use it to describe our work connotes a job that we do that nobody else wants to do. Instead, I believe that the example set by our team our fellows and our staff redefine what it means to be successful and in fact create alternative pathways towards it. You do not have to wait until the end of your career to be of service to this country. This is the story of us. I am who we are. You might ask what are some challenges that we face? And I would say operational challenges aside, which I'm happy to get to either on the panel or during personal discussion, I would say that our biggest challenge is the status quo. Skepticism, generations old institutions, cynicism. This is our reality. But our vision for change is not just necessary, it's possible. As Bryce said just a few minutes ago, everything worth having is in life is not had without hard work. Have we made progress, you might ask. When I look back and I see 
and I ask this question of myself, which I do quite a lot, I think most about the cultivation of our partners, both in the country and beyond. I think both of the previous speakers have touched on this. Every year, there is a growing importance and growing focus on education by hundreds of people and by top companies all over the world. This, to me, is progress. What else can be done for the Philippines to develop, you might ask? There are multiple pieces of this puzzle, but I believe that it should be rooted in equal educational opportunities for every child in this country, no matter where they were born or whom they were born to. From that type of citizen, from that type of system, we would be better preparing our citizens to contribute and participate in our society. I also recognize that there are many pieces to this puzzle, including employment, infrastructure, food security, political governance, and public health. Ultimately, we need to unite around a common definition of what it means to be Filipino. We also need to redefine how leadership through community investment can produce local solutions and independence. Are we alone? The answer is absolutely not. I personally know many other Filipinos working in the fields of education, leadership, and development. And honestly, I don't think my career path would have been the same without them. I have, so many others have shaped my vision and I am proud to work alongside many other young Filipinos in the government, in social enterprise, and in other public services. What's more, in our organization, Teach for the Philippines alone, we have a grown of alumni that enter every year, that finish every year, and graduate doubly committed to seeing this vision of a, of a developed Philippines through. And I must make note of our vision, we will see this through within our lifetime. The only way that our country can fail is if we all give up on it. So I suggest that you join us. How do you join us if you're not in our sphere? What can you do? Apart from the usual things that people say, I think one of the most important is to start with a campaign about the positive attributes of the Philippines. I think many of us who, are, who believe in this country and who work in this sphere already practice this type of awareness. It's an inclusive awareness. By looking inward to the power and the beauty of our history, our culture, and our people, I truly believe that we can move forward together. And this is already too long. I am not, I'm not comfortable with public speaking, never have been. Um, but Richard and Rebecca had asked me to share with you all a couple of thoughts, parting thoughts, if you will. And I came up with three at the top of my mind, because these are three that I return to most often with the team and with our schools. The first is to remember where you come from. Our personal stories shape and inspire us in so many countless ways. My second wish for all of us is to stay humble and to never stop learning. This especially more so for the people in this room, especially when you, when you enter decision-making roles. And finally, I leave you with this last and most important one to me. Don't underestimate the power of listening. Thank you.